in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Lord, I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Yes, I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. I want you to turn this song into a simple but sincere prayer. Indeed, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, it has not entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. But I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. Your wisdom be formed in me Your glory revealed through me Your strength resides in me So I submit to your work in me Till your glory be formed in me This is a move. This is the 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 we lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay. Oh, glorious God, say. Affect my life, breathe on me. 
Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Ah. You are the Holy Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. 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 My body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me, breathe on me, breathe on me. Shali malana masi na magadi, she balana balaga da balana wosh. Shali malana balana balana kose ne magadi alada. Shali malana ne shalana da balada. Shada brana na gada bala na bala ka seda bala na niada. Shali baranda skada braga de bala ko shada brake dia. Lord we worship. Sade balanda braga dos kate prash kali kati priya hasada bala da. Unto the King immortal, invisible, the only wise God. You're the light of the world You've stepped down to my darkness Will you open my eyes Let me see The beauty that makes This whole heart adore you Hope for a life spent with you so here i am to worship here i am to bow Thank you for koinonia, the privilege of fellowship, even with the spirit of the living God. You have brought us tonight to change us. You have brought us tonight to build us. To you be all the glory and to you be all the praise. We sing your praise to the nations, thou King of Zion. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, all oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my King. In what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound. 
Thank you, Father. In worship, there is healing. In worship, there is deliverance. In worship, there are encounters. In worship, there are new dimensions. We ascend even through worship. Lord, we just take this moment to bless you. Thank you. Let your word change us tonight. We are malleable enough. Spirit of the living God, again we are here. And let your word change us. And for those who are connecting from all around the globe, I pray that the same power, the same grace that is even here will reach you in your homes, your churches, your various places. And to Jesus be all the praise. For in Jesus name with worship amen. amen god bless you give jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord good evening everybody it's always a joy to be in the presence of god the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord. I welcome everyone. Azaria family is connecting with us. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And those who are connecting by way of television and internet, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'd like to especially honor in our midst tonight His Majesty, the Olu of Wari, and Her Majesty. Thank you. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. It's an honor to have you around. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma. In the name of Jesus. This is a house of honor, and we honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. When a king can bow to the king, then his kingdom will truly stand. And we honor you, sir. We are proud of the fact that you love Jesus Christ, and we pray that in the name of Jesus, under your reign, that the worried kingdom will be a model for many other kingdoms in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, a few announcements just to do justice to a few things and then we'll get to the word of God. Number one, um, it's my pleasure and honor to announce that um, our the graduation ceremony for the Koinonia School of Ministry is at hand. Amen. By the privilege of God's grace, we'll be graduating the ninth set of the Koinonia School of Ministry and the second for Abuja. The dates are as follows. For Zaria, it will be on the 16th of September. And for Abuja campus, it will be on the 18th Sunday, two Sundays after now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, our graduation ceremony is, is, we believe in it, we invest in it, and um, it's been over six months of rigorous training, building people across ministry, business, leadership, and it's a joy and honor to um, watch them graduate and so please invite everyone and those of you who have your loved ones graduating make sure that you are well represented and um, you are allowed to celebrate them as you see fit they have done a marvelous job of endurance and may the lord bless you in jesus name and then a very important announcement um, we've had people, we've had reports, and I thought to address this immediately while I have your attention, that while people 
come out for altar calls they return back to their seats and find items missing some their bags it is embarrassing but then i have to announce it that in a large house like this with people inside and outside it is true that not everybody is of faith hallelujah it shouldn't be that in the house of god like this when someone is coming to the stage to make the declaration for jesus in fact you should protect you should be your brother's keeper with joy knowing that someone is getting saved but unfortunately we've had instances where people would respond to the altar call return back to their seats and not find their items and not find those who were sitting there when they left isn't it demonic that someone comes and under this fire the same energy it takes to steal is the same energy it takes to listen and contact favor and go back with results that can be repeated hallelujah please let me announce that by the grace of god our um our security have been mandated to deal decisively with any and everyone who is caught in any act of theft we are spiritual people but we are also responsible people we owe it to make sure that lives and property are protected within the time they are here hallelujah and um, even if you are a thief and you come here be willing to repent even if you cannot help yourself are we together yes but we will not allow an, an instance like that and please if the cctv cameras pick you or anything that happens to you um, we're not going to bend to any sentiments whatsoever we would hand you over to the law to deal with you accordingly in the name of jesus i'm hoping that today will be the day of salvation for whoever has been a victim our own is not 99 days the moment prophecy comes that is the day that the thief will be caught hallelujah so please let me encourage you it is a very bad attitude very very bad attitude you come to the church and people are living with blessings illumination revelation you know higher levels of hunger and somebody lives with a property a physical property he did not come with how do you go back home and rejoice that you stole from the house of god hallelujah may the lord show mercy in jesus name the final announcement is for our workers retreat all the workers here in abuja by the grace of god 10th of september that will be next week um we'll be having our retreat it's saturday saturday the 10th of september the time is 10 a.m please let's do well to make ourselves available the venue will be at doa our usual venue so that we can have some time of prayer and the lord will grant us grace in jesus name amen and amen um i've had the honor of traveling from region to region and making our contributions as far as planting the fires of revival helping people encounter jesus sincerely um on wednesday i think we're in cote d'ivoire abidjan and it will be quite a wonderful experience so for those of you who are within that region and the neighboring regions i pray that it will be a wonderful time as we share faith and fellowship together in jesus name but the point is that i have been concerned at the kind and the quality of believers um, it's been my respectful contemplation and even my charge to the body of christ that there needs to be an upgrade on the kind and the quality of believers that are produced in our churches and our christian platforms if the banner of faith is to be preserved and to stand the test of time hallelujah it matters the kind of believers that are produced it matters the kinds of teachings it matters the arrangement of the teachings hallelujah you have heard me share for some of you who have followed our meetings and i have charged believers that in in building 
in building people please listen this is true for ministry but it applies to every other aspect of life in building people you need to realize that when you have people around a church or any kind of ministerial platform if they do not encounter jesus the god of the bible there will be a lot of trouble there because anyone who has not submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom that person is a helpless prey in the hand of satan no matter how sincere that individual is are we together the effect of one spirit in the life of that individual can produce catastrophe that will destroy people so it matters that when people come to church that they encounter jesus this is not an issue of an evangelist sermon or perspective the foundation for the believer's christian experience is his encounter with jesus you can encounter a man of god and that becomes profitable only if jesus is revealed through that encounter are we together now there are several people in church who are not saved they are not near the things of god and it's wonderful provided their hearts are hungry and ready transformation takes time salvation does not take time at the moment you are convicted of the spirit of god you must be able to surrender your heart until the holy spirit is at work in you the 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 negative possibilities in your life cannot be defined are we together so until we have believers who are willing or we have people i don't want to use the word congregants but it is important especially for we men and women of god in order of priority we must see to it that with every encounter there is an opportunity for people to know that the church is not just a spiritual place where christians converge it's more than that are we together the epicenter of every christian activity in church or any other place is jesus jesus first no matter how modern we become no matter how sophisticated we become and let me respectfully observe that this is the bless this is one of the um the issues with the pentecostal charismatic movement now I, i'm not i you know that i love the body of christ but i'm just addressing it because for many people they jump jesus and go straight to power miracles signs and wonders and so you find people who are fasting in church you find people who are praying in church you find people who are even speaking in tongues supposedly in church and you find out that they are around the atmosphere of charismatism but that foundational encounter with jesus is not there and sometimes because of you know they are being around spiritual things they can be appointed and they will be given spiritual responsibilities the danger is that their emphasis becomes their their experience becomes their emphasis if jesus was not the foundation of their experience jesus cannot be captured in what they are saying are we together now yes let me tell you the truth we are going to lose the potency of godliness generationally speaking if we bring jesus out take jesus out and leave power we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave wisdom we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave the bible we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave prayer we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave fasting we are in trouble the foundation for the believers experience is jesus now there are many keys of the kingdom i hope we are learning already tonight there are many keys of the kingdom they represent the mysteries of the kingdom but there is only one key to the kingdom and that key is not a metallic object you turn left or right jesus himself the bible says there is no other there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved you will be surprised get an average believer random sample believers across several churches and ask them about jesus they will tell you about favor in an instant 
they will tell you about miracles in an instant and there's nothing wrong with that they will tell you about breakthrough in an instant how can i come out of this situation and say ah, i know the power of sacrifice let me see what you have sow a seed you are out but when you begin to ask them about jesus that is the reason why there are many people who can dwell in the midst of people who are not saved under their care for many years and they never hear about Jesus. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that the faith life was founded upon Jesus. It was not founded upon a man of God. It was not founded upon a denomination. Are we together? If people pile up in a church and they are not saved, that church is not safe, S-A-F-E, because all kinds of trouble will emerge. You, you simply would have gathered bodies for Satan to use. There are many, respectfully speaking, there are many pastors plunging into depression today, world over, having all kinds of headaches wondering why is there trouble every time trouble I not there, there are all kinds of things that come with leadership generally but when jesus is not the epicenter of what you do and when he's not enthroned in the heart of the people who listen to you believe me you can spend 10 years and in one day the kind of trouble that the devil will ferment will almost break your heart and plunge you to death. Jesus, the son of the living God. So when a believer or when an individual comes, he knows that the foundation, listen, if I call anyone right now, I pick anyone and I say, tell me about your spiritual journey. You will be surprised. Our fathers and grandfathers, both physically and in the faith, there was something, you know, when we were growing up, we used to hear people say they could recite the day they were saved. Do you recall that? They can tell you I was saved on the 5th of October. This They will even recall the event. But as many people, I'm not saying, I'm not just talking about the religiosity of keeping the date. But it was such a special moment for them, they preserved it. Even after 30 years, they will tell you it was a Wednesday afternoon. They will even tell you the message they had. But you can call a gentleman right now and say, listen, you are the head of counseling and prayer. Talk to me a bit about your spiritual journey. He said, what does that mean? I was appointed. I've been around the house of God. When the church said fast, I fasted. When the church said pray, I prayed. That person does not have a foundation. It's not an insult. There is serious trouble there. Because the day he now has authority and the mandate to mature and raise other believers, he is going to teach them according to his faulty template. Are we together? How can a father raise a responsible child to become a Christian when the father himself does not know how to be a Christian? What is he going to tell the son? You raise people to reflect your conviction and your experiences. So follow carefully what I'm teaching tonight. There are many people who have not encountered Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Now let's go to the second level. There are those who are saved. Are we together? But the opportunity has not been given to them to grow spiritually. That is another danger again. I don't mean to play with your mind. We love our nation. But how many of you know that Nigeria produces, for instance, agriculturally and then our oil and gas? But because largely we are not involved in refining, that raw product does not bless us so much. Are we together? It has to be exported, refined, and brought back. And that finished product is what you queue for. You don't queue for the dark paste of smelly, oily substance. That's not what you are packing your car for. Are we together? When you pack your car at the filling station, it is still gas, it's still your oil. But it is not the version that left the earth that you are looking for. 
that means there are many believers who get saved and do not submit themselves methodically to be discipled and to be mentored the word discipleship is a word that is gradually disappearing from the church or unfortunately in many platforms what we call discipleship is not maturing believers to look like christ it is maturing them to subscribe to the template of a denomination and sometimes that ends up destroying people again but according to scripture when you encounter jesus christ listen very carefully when you encounter jesus christ and that comes even by the spirit immediately you are introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and you are introduced to the ministry of the word these are the principal tools that are responsible for your maturity you gain stature in the kingdom to the degree to which you subscribe to the dealings of the spirit what does the holy spirit do to you he makes you alive to christ that means all your organs that have been deadened by a life of sin and being alienated from christ there is a regeneration from the word regime a regeneration that happens to you hallelujah and now because you really cannot grow holistically in isolation i hope you know that god designed spiritual growth to be enhanced through community christian living that means it is difficult for an individual to grow holistically in isolation even when you read through church history those who had their experiences alone had the side effect of a lot of imbalances because they could not see anything they just saw a perspective and that was it so god's authorized platform for the believer's growth is that as the believer encounters jesus christ he is introduced listen carefully he's introduced to a a gathering a larger community of believers why is he introduced to the larger community of believers i'll be showing you later on but that he's now introduced to a community of believers that now begin to help him he or she will meet people who are of like minds number two it will grant the person the courage and the confidence to now begin the process of transformation because transformation is very powerful if it is done corporately are we together so let's say for instance from a life of sin you now became saved chances are excellent that if in isolation you will be so lonely you will not have the courage to walk in keeping with the truths that make for your transformation and chances are you will go back are we together but when you have believers just like you if you are the only one praying in tongues you have no friend you have nobody who prays with you the day the people you left see you they will make you feel stupid for that newfound life and chances are excellent that you will not have the courage to walk in keeping with the things that advance you spiritually so god surrounds you with like-minded people are we together now you begin to understand the culture of the kingdom there are many people who are saved but they have not submitted themselves to transformation the bible calls these people carnal the word carnal is not an insult the word carnal means that their impulses the everything they do is governed by their senses they are sensual in their approach emotional in their approach the day they feel like hating you and getting angry they vent it out they are the ones who tell you things like i'm like that or even my mother and my father everybody knows i can be angry any day you just get used to me and expect all these things that is a carnally minded person he is not an unbeliever but he's one who has not submitted to the authority and the transforming power of the word if we're together say amen, amen. are we together now unfortunately longevity in church does not automatically bring transformation i have drawn this again and again don't you make the mistake of thinking because you are 10 years old in church 10 years old in church does not mean you are changed that far your change is based on your hunger 
your change is based on the quality of the spiritual vessels that feed you and guide you i say this with all honor to the body of christ there are many assemblies and platforms where the members are hungry and thirsty but the problem is the vessel and the ill-prepared meal that they continue to be served with so you find people who are hungry they love god they want to learn but you see this is why god is going to judge us as preachers because one person mandated by god responsible for the holistic building of another person your personal carelessness can stunt the growth of someone for 10 years the problem was not his hunger or her hunger the problem is that what you are serving is absolute nonsense hallelujah there are children biologically speaking who now they've arrived that's the type of the new birth but then they are malnourished ill nourished when you see them you you can almost tell that they are sick their skin is not fresh they have deficiencies of several minerals vitamins whatever it is when a good doctor meets these people the first thing is to begin to introduce them they study what is missing in your life basic biology and health science will teach us that there are all kinds of sicknesses that are related to the body and they can trace and tell you is the deficiency of vitamin c vitamin e oh your gums are bleeding you need to take more of this and that that's how it is spiritually so you can look at an individual and you look at his life please get the message i'm teaching you now understand it it will make you powerful and matured in the spirit you can study an individual and find out that based on your spiritual diagnosis there is the absence of the prayer ministry that means whoever mentored him did not emphasize the value and the power of prayer and priesthood as a tool for transformation so the person may be sincere but all he knows is just bible study when you say pray and you stretch five minutes he's looking at you and say ah, i was not trained like this oh five minutes is enough that's my contribution to my spiritual growth because the person who mentored him did not open him up experientially to the value of prayer are we together for another his problem may be that he's not learned the power and the supremacy of the word of god so he may pray but then you find out that he does not have respect and regard for the word of god why he will tell you the person who trained me did not emphasize the word of god when he came up on stage it was just stories and stories and i laughed and at the end of it we shared the grace that means members for want of word will be a reflection of the emphasis and the level of the seriousness of the spiritual leaders that train and build them do you agree with that when believers are not matured to be carnally minded the bible says is death is that in your bible it says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace how does a person metamorphose from being a natural man to a carnal man then to a spiritual man there are various stages the natural man is one who has not even met christ the carnal one is the one who has met christ but the workings of the spirit and the workings of the word has not yet found expression you see the difference now so the natural person that one he just needs jesus he needs to go to the cross there are many many carnal people in church unfortunately many of them because of the longevity of their stay have been appointed leadership positions and you will find out you know a carnal man by his perpetual disrespect for the supremacy of the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit these are the two indices that define true spirituality or otherwise i know you are carnal or spiritual to the degree to which i see your submission level to the word of god so you can be in the office for instance and you are a relative christian what did i call you 
uh, we were traveling and I was shown a very interesting video that I laughed. They told somebody to choose, I think, a million dollars or the presence of God. And he said, no, he's not worthy for that presence. It is, is the, the money that... When I saw that, I said, that's right. Gave us a silly excuse. I'm not worthy for the presence. No. Are we together? The cure for carnality is not counseling. No. The cure for carnality is not even deliverance like laying on of hands to cast out demons. The cure for counseling is that the cure for carnality is an immersion into a system that brings you under the authority, the governing authority of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And let me tell you, it takes a long time for that transition to happen. Anybody who tells you that he got born again, I hope you know there is nothing called the gift of maturity. All these believers who evolve out of nowhere and claim maturity, no sir, maturity even physically madam if you give birth to your child today and by the next day he's coming with a cup of water to give you will you drink it what is wrong with bringing a cup of water you are saying that child i gave birth to the child i've not even recovered myself and the child said good morning ma fluent english and he's giving you a cup of water no i mean there are natural things that don't make sense how do god can give you speed don't get me wrong God can give you speed, but believe me, there is no such thing as instant maturity. God himself subscribed the path of maturity to process. You know why? So that you can build a pattern around it to help others to mature. There are many, when someone tells you, I am a matured Christian, you don't need to argue. What are the indices? How do I know you are a matured Christian? I've been in church for a long time. I handled Bible study last year. Not necessarily. Those are not indices for maturity. Listen, it is my prayer and I pray that God will open your eyes to see the burden in my heart. My desire for you is to be so thoroughly sound and furnished. Not unto pride. Are you together now? So that we, you can do much for the kingdom. Just walk with me. There's something I want to show you tonight. Many believers are not efficient tools as far as the revelation of Jesus and the advancement of the kingdom is concerned because they are largely ill-prepared. If you are a battle axe and you are blunt, you have not been trained, you will only be a casualty if taken to battle. Is that true? Transformation. Discipleship. It's a word that many people hate. And then there are others who say, I want to grow at my pace. I will feed myself and learn whatever I need to learn. You see, as a student, respectfully speaking, it is irresponsible to choose what you want to listen to. Is that true? When a student gains admission, you go and sit down in class, trusting the teacher and trusting the system. If the teacher fails you, then the government that is responsible will punish the teacher. But you don't get to the class. There are many, many courses in, in our, our institutions of learning. Many students will call certain courses boring. Is that true? And there are certain courses you call exciting. There are certain courses that are maybe three, four, five credit units. And there are others that are just one credit unit. That means the emphasis is not the same. Depending on what you are going to become. There are times you sit down and you almost want to cry. When will this course finish? But you will sit down there. But when we come to church, most times we, the Bible calls it itching ears. What is this one that is teaching on, on character or this now? We've not had the message of favor in a long time. Is it that this man is not aware of what is happening in Nigeria? You sit down. Why don't you trust? Verify whether the teacher hears God. Verify whether the teacher loves you. If so, sit quietly and learn. In the school of ministry, we have several courses and finance is the last of them. 
and usually you will understand when we start the course finance because there are many people if the first course is finance as soon as we are done you will graduate by yourself and say that's it may god bless you i think god has met my area of need <laughs> let me tell you why many believers don't grow properly we run around from pillar to post looking for what we want to hear what not what we need to hear are we together Pastor, can you teach about wickedness? Why? Because you have a personal problem with somebody politically. We convert your problem into a message. Are we together? No. You don't come as a ministry. Listen, you must be disciplined even as a man of God. I'm saying this to ministers of the gospel. If a church is looking for money, that does not mean you change the curriculum and then this, remember the Holy Spirit is called the Lord of hosts. He is the one who designs the growth pattern of the people. Are we together? You don't just come and preach your need and say, I think something is wrong. We are going to emphasize this issue of money and giving for the next eight weeks. I'm not being sarcastic. It's important for you to understand that the believers need to grow holistically. It's been my emphasis that if your growth does not capture everything meant for your holistic development. Let me tell you this. When Satan comes to attack you, he does not just attack you. He studies how the pattern of training that you have been submitted to. If Satan finds out that in your training, prayer was the emphasized he will route through that area if satan finds out that prayer was exaggerated as against the word of god he will route through that if he finds out that the place of character was not taught you he will route through it if he finds out that success influence and other kingdom teachings were not captured in your experience he will leave you to keep practicing priesthood while he destroys you using the tools of need. Satan does not just attack like that. So he comes to find a family that loves God sincerely, consecration, hunger, but they do not know anything about the economic system of the kingdom. He will fashion his, he will want to attack their prayer life. But he will not attack the prayer life by attacking prayer directly. He will use the area of ignorance to so distract them. To a point that the next time the man of the house says, All right, everybody, let's come for prayer. The wife will turn and say, I don't know who this your God is. But I'm tired of this thing. And by the time the wife frowns at her husband, he will go back and say, God, you had her. Me too, I'm tired. It's just I didn't say my own. <laughs> Are we together? Imagine a doctor that never went to anatomy class. Imagine a doctor that never went through surgery teachings. And then you find yourself in a hospital and he says, I want to help you. You will not even pay. Come and lie down. Come and do what? You just lie down. And he carries an injection like a knife wanting to stab you. Who taught him that strategy? The quality of believers that we are producing because of the kinds of things that we are teaching. Are we together? It is important to touch the various areas and the various aspects of the, the, the kingdom life. But... We must never de-emphasize or overemphasize the truths of the kingdom. Now, I, I submit to you that it's a very difficult thing. Difficult because every one of us is already given a dimension to function. And the dimension you are given will usually be your emphasis. That is where the need for the other dimensions of the body comes in. God does not give you the labor to learn everything by yourself. You can outsource the dimensions you do not have through humility 
and meekness that means god is training me in the prophetic so my own assignment will be consecration fasting and prayer i will not have the time to go and learn under you know a business school or learn under a financial mentor and god will save me that burden because there is somebody doing the work for me but i must honor the person to say listen while i was fasting and praying and rolling on the ground for one week god was dealing with you too i am not better than you simply because my training looks more spiritual i now submit to what you are doing please help those under the anointing one lecture from this guy who has spent five years learning the principles of the kingdom will now empower me in addition to what i have and then the guy too there is the side effect because for focusing learning about the economic system of the world as against his spiritual life he must balance it too and if he ignores me he will be wealthy but one attack on his life because he does not understand priesthood he can't defend himself one wrong investment motivated by the spirit of poverty can bring that man down are we together i'm coming back to this point let's go to the third level the third level and, I, and I, this is where i want you to pay attention to the third level is where believers are thoroughly trained and thoroughly mentored but they are not connected to purpose let me tell you there is a danger for any assembly when you keep pumping anointing in people revelation revelation and the people don't know what to do with it the body of christ is in trouble for this one is why many many men of god keep having a headache when you get young people a young man a young lady you are teaching them about finances teaching them about prayer and fasting do you not know that knowledge has an implication the goal of all that investment is that there must be an opportunity for them to deploy by the time a man is fasting 100 days yet there is nothing for him to do in church are we together praying the kind of power that guy has one day he's going to say listen I, I don't know what to do with all this fire locked up in my bones that's why you can give him opening prayer of two minutes and he will turn it into prophecy for one hour it's not that he's bad the fire is too much and you have not told him what to do with it and there is no opportunity to deploy it every time you begin to teach people right and to mentor them there must be in your training the systems of deploying it this is true for ministry but this is also true for government if you keep training young people you are having graduates coming graduates coming and there's no platform to be able to help them let me tell you something somebody is going to come into their life and say listen don't mind this person you can start your own church if god is calling you that's fine but if god is not calling you that that becomes the advice or you can start your own business or you can do whatever it is let me tell you it's a risk to enlighten people and leave them without purpose are we together so i'm praying every day with you i'm fasting every day with you you've now graduated from the school of ministry impartation every service you are falling down and standing up revelation after revelation a day will come knowledge is what will frustrate you not ignorance you will find yourself overdoing things and you'll be angry because the goal is to have expression something within you keeps crying for expression are we together that's the reason why a man who keeps teaching his child say how to drive help them please you are teaching someone how to drive his car you are teaching him how to do something and you leave him there the gentleman can drive and yet there's no car to drive one day what do you think is going to happen talk to me you did it so you know one day when he's not around you say listen uh, this this fire is 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 this this thing i need to drive God never designed people to remain members forever. 
listen listen just listen just listen when i say not to be members listen people don't have to be around you to be with you are we together now that means if god is training you and one day god gives you a job with african union or un you have become an extension of what we represent are, are we together the joy is to see that now the value for you ah i prophesied oh this thing i just said this is a prophetic word in the name of jesus christ please sit down this is the aspect that is missing in church and i say this respectfully speaking there is quality training quality mentorship training but there are no platforms so you find out leaders who should be changing society are dying with church fanatism nothing for them you see people who should change there are people who qualify to be governors leaders but they are not aspiring because they have not been taught that purpose is also spiritual Moses whereas you should be helping Israel Joseph you should be bringing solutions to the economic problems of Israel whereas you are there quietly with a small life this is what this is why we are not able to translate our Christian experience to a context that transforms society it is the reason why when you say you are a Christian especially in Africa most times they just look at you as if you are just a fanatic with no value to society is someone learning let me tell you this i have said it and i will say it again preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with the anointing preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with revelation if we don't mentor the younger generation properly there will be trouble because when these guys are accessing light it's important for them to know that the seven mountains are also platforms of ministry so that the person who now is routing the part of politics and the one who is staying to become a national prophet they are doing the same thing in the realm of the spirit you cannot say the one who is at the altar is higher than the one who is in government no no without esther the jews would die are we together it took joseph manning the helm of affairs to preserve the purposes of god Africa needs to understand the apostolic structure for kingdom advance. I can tell you we have not yet captured that blueprint holistically. That's why I took the time, respectfully speaking, to honor his majesty because of these kinds of apostolic understanding. You imagine now, respectfully speaking, the kind of approach of leadership and governance to his territory. Africa I'm a man of prayer I'm a man of fasting and I'm a man of the word but I'm a man of the whole counsel of God there are many young people right now who are not supposed to be on the pulpit they are being on the pulpit is causing trouble to them and to others they, they are not finding definition but the mentorship structure they have received has said once you are spiritual find a way of coming to stand here and they stand here yet they know joseph the, the, the throne is calling you daniel the place of governance is calling you esther you are fasting but realize that you are being called to the palace there will always be people like anna the prophetess their ministry stops at the temple they never go out of the temple if you take them out of the temple to be involved in secular things you have destroyed them they were called to stay they will stay and wait and jesus will still come to the temple and meet them this has been my concern 
by the privilege of God's grace I have studied many revivals I have studied a bit of the history of the church in Nigeria I can tell you not to this is not the platform to start discussing it but some of the major moves of God in Nigeria let me tell you this what killed them was a the emphasis of certain things there were those who came emphasizing the prophetic consecration prayer and then they didn't place emphasis on doctrine there are those who came i don't want to mention names respectfully speaking and the emphasis was just on doctrine and teaching and they de-emphasized the prophetic and prayer and both moves suffered By the time Nigeria has only preachers, I promise you that we are in trouble. We did a bad job. If a man of God produces only preachers, then we are in trouble. Because one policy from our parliament can stop the purposes of God. Are we together? I believe in influence. I believe in the whole counsel of God men of fire but people who are sheep among wolves having the intelligence of the kingdom and even the wisdom of egypt listen i have studied territorial transformation by the grace of god and i can tell you the truth when jesus walked upon the earth we need to study the ministry of jesus i can list for you all the people groups that jesus influenced jesus did not do crusades alone read your bible there were times he was with tax. He, he, the same passion he took to preach in one crusade was the same passion he took to go to the house of an influential tax collector. What was the result? Many people were set free because the man was a corrupt man. Look at Jesus. One moment he's talking to thousands of people. The next moment he's alone with the woman at the well with the same passion. The next moment, he's investing time casting out one demon because that one man set free was equal to 10 cities. Hallelujah. Please look at me. I can tell you this, and I say it with every sense of humility. It is the turn of Africa to blaze the fire of revival we have prophesied this and many who have gone before us have said this for many years that there are certain nations that have been uniquely singled out by the election of grace one of them chiefest among them is nigeria now with all due respect and honor to every nation i am telling you this prophetically and that by the spirit however rather than just rejoicing and jumping and saying we are the ones pioneering revival we need to go and study the revivals that have happened and why they died are we together now yes where i come from there is a wise saying that when you see your neighbor's bed on fire don't just watch and laugh look for water quickly because that same fire is coming to you too look for water and start soaking your own beard too Europe has had its chance of revival. The US has had its chance, the word of faith and all these ones. But let me tell you, as we prepare for the return of Christ, whether we like it or not, this mantle for global missions, this mantle has right now is in Africa. It's not a lie. It's not, help those under the anointing. It's not a lie respectfully speaking once upon a time now i say this with every sense of respect many nigerians fly out with joy and say they are going for a lecture or conference somewhere but right now the whole nation and the entire globe they continue to come to this candlestick that has now been lit but my listen my 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 charge tonight is a prophetic warning because while we rejoice thinking we are getting it there are things we are missing too we are already beginning to follow the same pattern that aborted the revivals past do you know why 
rather than staying with the Holy Spirit to understand the structure and the formation of the move of God in a way that it lasts. Listen, do you know when God comes, his emphasis is not to produce preachers alone. His emphasis is to produce witnesses and ambassadors. Please hear me, body of Christ. God is not in the business of raising preachers alone. Preachers alone will not get the job done. They never got the job done in the Bible alone. Read the Bible and see all those who walk. Wealthy people walked. Those in government walked. Joseph's walked. Esther's walked. Elijah walked. You can't teach Elijah about finances. That's none of his business. He's a radical prophet. However, you can't come and put Esther down and Joseph down and throw away economics. Some of you right now are about to lose your mantle and your call because you are following a template. If I'm spiritual, I must be this. No, no. There is a formation and there is a distribution of training patterns. We must have the intelligence. Listen, men of God, we must be matured enough to know what training pattern is allocated for what formation. You don't train a theater art student in an anatomy lab. It doesn't work that way. There are courses called general courses that everybody would do. Education, secular enlightenment gives us that knowledge. There are many Josephs who have been trained to become Elijah. They are going to fail. There are many Esthers who have been trained to become Elijah. And there are many Josephs, Elijahs, who are becoming Esthers. There are people who have no business with the palace. Their assignment is at the altar. They should be mastering the art of... The key is to recognize your place and appreciate other dimensions. Are we together? For as long as this revival produces only preachers i repeat we are in trouble no the revival must produce men of hunger don't get me wrong the revival must produce men of fire that intrinsically god is not looking for preachers god is looking for witnesses if the geography of your witness is the altar then so be it stay there and fan the flames but don't stop Joseph from getting to the palace because you don't need to be there. Your assignment may not need the palace. But if Joseph never gets to the palace, if Esther never sits down with Ahasuerus, there are Jews that will die. Now please look up. Can I tell you this? whether you are joseph or elijah or daniel or anna the prophetess the word of god prayer the spirit of god these are general causes no matter where you are going to whether you are getting to the palace it will still be by the spirit by the word are we together there are many people claiming they are prayer warriors and the grace that follows a prayer warrior is not there because their assignment is that of a Daniel and every time they want to go like Daniel they are surrounded by Elijah's so they feel guilty for being Daniel's and they are giving up the Elijah mantle the Daniel mantle to remain Elijah if you are not Elijah leave that place and find where Daniel is Pray in the spirit for one minute. My heart is boiling with a good matter to give us structured intelligence on how to maximize the revival that is upon Africa right now because we are making a costly mistake and by love the Holy Spirit is pointing us and helping us to have understanding. Salakata Prandagabaskatelech Ekrakata Bakata Broskotopakate 
Jacate proscoti la caparante gebas. Shalika prende scoti zakateria kata. Hallelujah. Now watch this. By the time we go to Hebrews 11, the Bible does not dichotomize them. When we get to Hebrews 11, both the Daniels, the Elijahs, the Esthers were given one word, elders. The Bible says they obtain all of them, the ones who preached, the ones who man government for Jesus, the ones who preserved the economy, they said all of them were called elders. I like this part of the song. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. We'll raise your banner high. down I read my Bible well and the Bible says he gave on to some he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets he gave on to some evangelists some pastors you went to school if they say he gave some that means there are others what did he give the rest? Because the same Lord is rich unto all. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. I raise your banner high. I shine your light so Please look up. If Mary was mentored by Anna the prophetess, she would have missed Jesus. Because Anna the prophetess would keep her in the temple. And as wonderful as she is, Anna the prophetess would not be able to teach her so much about marriage. Yet marriage was the area of her call. That was the area that would bless Jesus. Her assignment was to be chaste enough until Jesus arrives through her. Joseph of Arimathea was not a prayer warrior, but without Joseph of Arimathea, he used his influence as a man of means to secure the grave where Jesus was put in. Without Joseph of Arimathea, the word, oh grave, where is your sting, will not come to place. The body of Jesus was hanging on that cross. Prayer and fasting had finished his ministry. It took influence to bring that body from the cross please hear me nigeria we need to redefine by the spirit the apostolic formation for a revival that lasts we have laughed at others who went before us some of us were arrogant enough to even be sarcastic towards them now the mantle has come upon us we should not fail a generation through pride we need to sit down and learn the patterns of the kingdom Africa does not need preachers alone. I repeat. Terrorists know this. Do you know not everybody who is a terrorist is kidnapping? There are those who are financiers. There are those who are the priests and the mediums. You hardly see them outside. But they are the ones who power those ones who go and fight. They understand the formation. Hear me. 
there are some of you based on your call and assignment you are not only going to fast and pray for 40 days the rest of your life will be in that consecration because you have the assignment of a watcher you have the assignment of a watcher you will be given the burden of nations you will be given the burden of territories you will pray down revival upon people but my caution for you is while you pray down revival don't teach that watchers are the only people needed in that formation dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.